doing? Want to see a really big rough cut? Good grief! So this is the twin shock. Mega's rough cut. That's literally what it is. It works the same way as a rough cut. It looks kind of like the rough cut, except it's like three times as big as the rough cut and almost three times as expensive. And this blaster was a tremendous deal when it came out because we had never gotten anything like this in the Mega series and we actually haven't gotten anything like it since. But there, there might be a reason for that, but I'll get into that later. You can probably tell just by looking at it, I have used this blaster to a tremendous extent. It is full of gashes and nicks, and it has done the stairs test not once, not twice, but just about once every single time I've used it in combat. This genuinely was my main secondary for the longest time until I got the warden, which then that became my main secondary, but I've already reviewed that thing, even though I might review it again some point in the future, I don't know. This is the twin shock, let's get started with the design. I'm gonna be honest, it looks way too boring for my taste. There really aren't too many details here, the ones that are there don't make any sense. Except for kind of these ridges here around the barrels, that looks really cool and I really like that detail. But pretty much everything else just, it, it doesn't really line up with anything. Like it's got this kind of metallic part on the top of the grip, which looks cool. But then the entire rest of this part of the blaster is super plain, but then they try to glitz it up with these ridges down here and add a couple more up there. And then there's just like four bolts here for some reason. And there's an intake valve here. And then what's this? I don't understand. It's just, it's a weird design. And of course, they put two tactical rails on the top, even though they definitely could have put a third one. I mean, more scopes, the better. Two times zero magnification isn't enough. We need three times zero magnification in order to really get that performance outcome. The ergonomics on this blaster are very good. This grip looks a bit over detailed, but it is super comfortable. It's just the perfect size for my hands, about the same size as the stripes grip, maybe a little bit smaller, but it is very nice on the hands. The same goes with the fore grip, even though I think it's a little bit too thick. I think if they switch these grips around, it might make a bit more sense, but I don't know, that's really being nitpicky. The trigger pull is very smooth considering this is a two-stage trigger just like the rough cuts, and the functionality of this blaster is also just like the rough cut. To operate this blaster is pretty simple. You front load 10 darts, you pull it back, you push it forward, and then you fire either once for two shots, or you can fire half for one shot, and then again for the other shot, or slam fire. Now this blaster is frighteningly loud. I believe it's the loudest Springer in my whole collection, but it is also really, 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 really ridiculously smooth. It is so effortless. There's no crunch or anything to priming the blaster and the trigger feels snappy and responsive. It is a wonderful build on the inside. And in case there's even half of a person out there who's asking, it has two sling attachment points. So it does make for a good secondary. Now let's get on to uh, the issue it has. This blaster suffers from bad smart AR syndrome, which is pretty self-explanatory. The smart ARs are not reliable at all. And I think the best way to demonstrate this is just with the firing demo. I have 10 perfect condition Mega Aki Strike darts. They're all in really good shape. They aren't smushy at all. They're very solid. They're very nicely built. Good darts, nothing wrong with the darts. Just wanna emphasize that. I'm going to do this three times. First with single shot, then with slam fire, and then with the half trigger pull thing, you know. This happens once every single time you try and shoot it. We're now going to do it with slam fire and see if it happens again. So that one farted a dart out and half ejected one of the shots. Finally, we're going to doing it like the half trigger pull. I don't know how to explain it. It just shot three darts at once. Like, it's actually reliable how unreliable it is. Uh, yeah, this problem has only gotten worse over time because when I first got it, it worked flawlessly. It was actually super reliable with the Smart ARs, but as time has gone on, those Smart ARs have really taken a beating. Now that could be because of the excessive amount of battle damage that this thing has endured, but that shouldn't screw up the Smart ARs. I mean, that is just a part of the blaster. The rest of the blaster works just fine. Why is the trigger still as smooth? Why is the firing 
still as reliable? Why is it still as effortless and smooth to operate? There's nothing wrong with it. The smart ARs are just stupid. And as I just said, it has gotten so unreliable that you can count on it to screw up at least once for every five shots. That is terrible, and it basically becomes unusable at that point. It's actually really sad. I want to say that this is a super good blaster, and for a really long time, it was. This was my favorite Mega Blaster. In fact, no, this was my favorite blaster ever. I loved using this so much because it was just so fun and smooth. But I can't excuse bad smart ARs ever for any reason. It doesn't matter if the system is intricate. Hasbro made this system, it's their job to perfect it. And even worse, that is literally the only problem that I have with it, and that is an inconsistency problem. Some people are going to get perfect blasters, some people are going to get blasters like mine. I can't guarantee that because smart ARs are just so weird, it's like any tiny tiny little tiny change to the system that's on the inside will completely change the reliability of it. I can't count on that, so I can't say if this is a good or bad blaster because of it. But as a reviewer, the one that I have just so happens to maybe be the only blaster with bad smart ARs on the whole planet, and for that reason I have to say, don't buy this if you're gonna want to use it practically. It's not gonna work for you. It, it just ruins the user experience having the smart ARs fail every single time you try to use it. And trust me, I have tried Tried. I have put different darts in it, different kinds of brands of darts, orienting the darts differently, trying to shoot it slower, trying to shoot it faster. It always fails at least one time every single five shots. But on that note, I will say that this is an extremely fun blaster, even with that problem. If you just don't care about the reliability and you want a big, goofy, mega shotgun that you can play around with because it's loud, it's smooth, and it's fun. This blaster is built super well, and it's super good for just being a toy. It's just not good for practicality. So if you want to get one of these, I will link one in the description below. With that said, thanks for watching. You know the slew. I won't bother you with it. Bye.